I'm hungry. I eat about 30 grapefruit a day. Is that the Mayo Clinic or the Weight Watchers diet? I think it's the grapefruit growers diet. Good morning, breakfast clubbers. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Because it's going to be a terrible week. Why do you say that? Because I just found a hair in my orange juice. Anytime there's a hair in your orange juice, first thing Monday morning, it's going to be a terrible week. Mr. Kaufman, I've got to talk to you. You see? I am not going to go through another week trying to teach a history class with Harvey Butcher in it. Now, either he goes or I go. Sit down, Mr. Walters. <laughs> Would you like a little orange juice? Thank you. I've already had mine. Miss McIntyre, you familiar with Harvey Butcher? Oh, yes, I am. I've had him in for counseling about a dozen times. But I haven't been able to get through to him. Nobody can. I don't believe that. That's because you don't know him. He's not in your American history class. Good morning, everybody. May I join you? Oh, sure, right. sit down. Thanks. Miss McIntyre, do you think we should consider our owing Harvey Butcher? Well, I guess it's come to that. I agree. W what's our owing? RO is the new term for SA. SA? Social adjustment. RO means readjustment opportunity. Which is just another phony way of saying. We're gonna throw him out. Just bring to another school. Sometimes the shock of changing the environment helps to straighten a kid out. But most times it doesn't. It's really admitting we've given up on the kid. Well, we can't give up on the kid. Occasionally we do give up on a kid. And if anybody deserves being given up on, it's Harvey Butcher. What's his problem? If you knew him, you wouldn't ask. He's disruptive, insolent, loud and rude. He is going to get a gold pin for perfect attendance in the detention room. So what's to be accomplished by sending him to another school? What if he doesn't straighten out there? What then? He gets expelled. Permanently. You wouldn't be so ready to stand up for him, Mr. Dixon, if he were in your history class. We could handle him, couldn't we, Mr. Dixon? Take it easy, Alice. Hold on a second. Miss, um, uh, has the beginnings of a very interesting idea here. Now, Mr. Walters would like to get rid of Harvey Butcher. And Mr. Dixon would like to give him another chance. Isn't that right, Mr. Dixon? Right. Thank you. Now, it should be a very simple matter to rearrange Butcher's schedule so that he can be in your American history class. Oh, don't go to any trouble on my account. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Thank you. <laughs> We've got 15 more minutes.
come in. Hello there, sir. My name is Harvey Butcher, and I'd like you to know it's an honor and a pleasure to be in your history class, Mr. Mason. Dixon. Oh, of course. Well, you can see why I made the mistake. Mason, Dixon. <laughs> oh, this class is taking a test. Oh? Best of luck, everybody. <laughs> You've got 12 minutes left. I'm sorry, sir. I did want to make an impression on you. Oh, you have. <laughs> now sit down until the bell. Take any desk you like. What are you doing? <laughs> well, you said I could take any one I like. I like this one. <laughs> no. Second thought, I like this one. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Where are you going? To the detention room. I thought I'd volunteer and save you the trouble. <laughs> Miss Johnson, take over. Right. I mean take over the class. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Butcher. Sir? They'll be expecting me in the detention room. If I don't show up, they'll think something happened to me. <laughs> You can send them a note telling them that you're being held prisoner by Mr. Mason in room 222. <laughs> now, I want to know why you came to class 30 minutes late. I know you've got a good explanation. I do? I'd sure like to hear it then. I'll tell you what. You go back in the class and you think of an excuse that will satisfy both of us. I think you're starting to make progress with him. Hi, Joellen. Hi, Harvey. How are things going in Walter's history class without me today? We're sure quiet. We missed you. I bet Walter's didn't. Well, we did. It was pretty quiet without you. I guess I do make a lot of noise sometimes. Especially when I fall down. <laughs> At least we had some fun for a while. Yeah. What would a history class be without a few laughs? One time I remember... All set, Joellen? Oh, hi, Carl. Carl, do you know Harvey? Harvey Butcher, Carl Brenner. Hi. Hi. Harvey used to be in my history class. Well, let's go, Joellen. Everybody's waiting. Okay. So long, Carl. We'll sure miss you in history. Sure you will. Hi, Harvey. Hi, Harvey. Oh, hi, folks. Something wrong? Wrong? On a day like today, what could be wrong? Look, I'd like to stay and spend a little time with you people, but I've got to be spreading myself around. I'm very big around here, you know. In fact, I'm very big around everywhere. Here, here, here. <laughs> oh, well, everybody loves a fat boy, right? Works at it, doesn't he? He's got a lot of energy, all right. I sure like to do something with it. Hey, where's my test? What'd you do, burn it? No. I thought I'd give the class a treat this morning and let you read yours aloud. <laughs> hey, what's this, a B minus? Oh, this paper is an F if I ever saw one. And I've seen quite a few. <laughs> Sorry to bring your average up, Harvey, but the grade stands. Sit down. Oh, thanks. As you recall, the question was to show how Benjamin Franklin would fit into today's society. Fade in. The loan department of Liberty Bell Savings and Loan. The vice president, sitting at his desk, glances up, sees a man with shoulder-length hair and rectangular glasses standing at the counter. I thought I said no hippies in here. <laughs> it's my next appointment. Very well, send him in. Have the guard keep an eye on him. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Franklin. Welcome to Liberty Bell. That's a nice kite you're carrying. Is there any particular reason why you have a key tied to the string? <laughs> you're waiting for the next thunderstorm so you can go out and fly it. <laughs> have the guard move down this way in case I need him. <laughs> now, what may we do for you, Mr. Franklin? You're applying for a loan so you can keep publishing your almanac. May I see your application form, please? 
printer, writer, inventor, philosopher, statesman, scientist. Can't you hold a job, Mr. Franklin? <laughs> hey, that's funny. I like that. Who wrote that? It's very funny. Harvey Butcher. Harvey Butcher? You gave him a B minus. Why not? Well, because that's not a proper essay. He's ridiculing the assignment. He's got most of the facts. To write that, you have to know the subject. Well, it's your business if you want to pander to that sort of thing. What do you think, Bill? If I were this kid's creative writing teacher, I'd give him an A. I'm glad to hear you say that. Because I want you to offer him a job on the school paper. Oh, now, wait a minute. Your paper hasn't had a humor column in three years. Harvey Butcher could do one for you. Uh-uh. I'm having enough problems without a humor column. What kind of problems? Uh, once was a time when the kids who ran the high school newspapers were cooperative, pro-administration types who wrote daring editorials about uh, school spirit and uh, litter bugs. But now, now I get the rebels, the militants, the free speechers. I spend most of my time trying to find the dirty words they conceal in the backgrounds of the drawings. Well, you missed a beauty last week. Oh, thanks for reminding me. They crossed me up. They made it so big I missed it with my magnifying glass. Bill, the kid who wrote this needs help. Hmm. He's going to be thrown out of school unless he shapes up. But he doesn't think there's anything to shape up for. I want to give him something. That column. He isn't worth the trouble, believe me. OK, I'll do it. I didn't know I was so persuasive. It wasn't you who sold me. It was him. <laughs> Harvey Butcher. This here is Neil Kovac, our editor. Hi. Why do you read this man's stuff? He's out of sight. Well, I have to have a masthead made up, so uh, you better think of a name for your column. Name? How about Fred? <laughs> Take any desk that's empty. Oh, and I'll need 500 words minimum from you by Thursday. Oh, I'd better get started then. I only know 400 words. <laughs> get around, baby. I think I'm going to need your support. Come on, Harvey. Sit right there. See you later. You've attracted my attention. <laughs> so? Well, it's a pleasure to watch someone who does their job really well. I mean, the graceful way you dip your brush into that gunk and then stroke it on, it's beautiful. Look, we have a lot of work to do around here. We don't need any clowns. I was only trying to... You know, for a humor columnist, you don't look very happy. That's the way it is with us funny guys sometimes. All the laughter and gaiety is inside. <laughs> you got time for the junior class advisor? Come in. Have you read this Butcher Kid's column in the Blue and Gold yet? Very funny stuff. Listen to this. Dateline Whitman High School, October 3rd. Militant students today took over the school cafeteria, but gave up when the dietitian threatened to serve them lunch. <laughs> now, that's what I call social satire. That's what I call a public service. Oh, Pete, I am happy to report that Harvey Butcher's attendance in the detention room has dropped off about 75%. Good. Maybe he just needed a nudge in the right direction. I came in to get your okay to have another junior class achievement dinner. This time I want to take the kids who work on the blue and gold. I don't know, Pete. Those things are getting expensive. Look, you let me take the juniors from the football team, the class officers, club presidents. These kids work just as hard. Maybe you could have it here in the teacher's cafeteria. It's supposed to be a reward, not a punishment. Well, maybe you could tell them you're going to have it here and then call it off at the last minute. That would seem like a reward. <laughs> Oh, all right, go ahead. But don't spend too much. Thank you. <laughs> what do you mean George Washington was unpopular? Wasn't he called the father of our country? 
tell it. Yes, but there sure were a lot of people who didn't agree with him, like what he said in his farewell address. Well, tell me what he said. Harvey? Well, mainly he spoke about partisanship in America, sectionalism, and that we should avoid foreign entanglements. Look, I don't have time for the funny stuff anymore. I mean, I'm not going to give you my material free when I can use it in my column. <laughs> Read chapter 16 tonight. Oh, Harvey. Very funny column yesterday. Even Mr. Kaufman liked it. I guess I'm going to have to aim a little higher then. <laughs> oh, Harvey, we're having a dinner Friday for the juniors on the Blue and Gold staff. Maybe you can make it? Sure. Sure, I'd like that. It's at Emilio's restaurant. And bring a date if you like. A date? Is this your ticket? No, I've been saving it for you. <laughs> You're in Mr. Dixon's first period history class, aren't you? Yeah. So am I. I know. You're Harvey Butcher. And you're Patty Muller. You're really funny in class. You're too kind, madam. And your new article is hysterical. I mean, everybody's talking about how funny it is. Well, once they're right. <laughs> you know, Mr. Dixon is having a dinner for the genius who are on the staff of the paper. And I was wondering, if. Hi, Patty. Did Norman get around to asking you to the party Friday night? Finally. I was afraid that I was going to end up sitting at home all night with nothing to do. Hello, Connie. Uh, this is Harvey Butcher. In your third period English class. I'm the uh, funny guy. Uh, kind of heavy. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Uh, Connie, I'll tell you why I'm calling. Uh, Mr. Dixon is taking the juniors on the staff of the Blue and Gold to dinner Friday, and... Well, uh, what I was wondering, if you're not doing anything Friday night... Huh? Oh, yeah. Sure, hair does have to be washed, doesn't it? Bye. Hello, Darlene Frank of 2344 Claymore Avenue. This is the question man. Answer this question correctly and you win a fabulous prize. Ready? All right, then here's the question. Do you have a date Friday night? No? Then you win, Miss Frank. An all expense paid night on the town with Harvey Butcher, the well-known humor columnist for the Whitman Blue and Gold. How about that? Yeah, this is Harvey. Can you make it? Hair. I understand. Well, in, in that case, Darlene, you don't win the big prize, but we're sending you a consolation prize of a bottle of shampoo. Brace yourself, Mr. Dixon. Your big dinner Friday night is going to be a major bomb. Oh? Yeah, that's right. Because I'm not going to be there. Why? I'm not on the blue and gold anymore. I just quit. Harvey! Harvey! Why? Look, I quit, that's all. What's the difference whether I write a crummy column or not? Why come and tell me then if it doesn't make any difference? I just thought you had a right to know since it was your idea in the first place. What happened, Harvey? Nothing happened. Why are you trying to make a big deal out of it? I'm not. I just want to know why this sudden change of attitude. Well, you see, sir, it's this way. I've been offered a better job, see? Humor editor for National Geographic. <laughs> oh, come on, sir. That deserves at least a little smile, doesn't it? Just a teeny little? You can still come Friday if you want to, Harvey. 
I figure the columns you've written are at least worth the price of dinner for two. Well, you see, sir, now that's another problem. I haven't been able to find the girl to bring to that affair who measures up to my own incredibly high standards. You don't have to have a date, Harvey. You're not suggesting, are you, sir, that I haven't been able to get a date, are you, sir? It just isn't necessary. Is it necessary? Of course it's necessary. I don't want you going around with the impression that I can't get a date. Fat people do date. You see, that's one of the great things about a school the size of Whitman. No matter how fat and homey you are, there's always somebody bad enough to go out with you. Please. I'm not going to be the only one here without a date. Hey, would you really be so bad? Isn't what you're doing to yourself worse? Isn't this worse? Try accepting yourself as you really are. And maybe other people will. Easy to say. I know it's not easy. But it's up to you. <laughs> you're funny. But you use it as a shield. Anybody tries to make contact, you give them a joke. Make them laugh. But you don't let anybody get too close. <laughs> Harvey. <laughs> don't be afraid to let people know who you really are. Uh, waiter. Yes, sir. What's this? Veal piccolini. That's thin slices of veal sautéed in marsala wine and covered with prosciutto ham and mozzarella cheese. It sounds great, but I don't like veal. <laughs> What's a sweet bread? Beats me. <laughs> hey, look who's here. Come on down, Hart. We've been waiting for you, man. The food's almost gone. Hey, Hart. Hey, what happened to you? This is the young man that likes a humor column. Hey, Harvey, how come you're late? I almost didn't come at all. Because I, I couldn't get a date. But somebody told me I should. I really wanted to come anyway. I, I like doing the column. I, li I like being on the staff with, with everybody. So I decided to come tonight. We're glad you did, Harvey. Yeah, Harvey. Glad to have you. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had a note that you wanted to see me. Oh, yes, I got the bill from Emilio's restaurant for your junior class achievement orgy. Which one of the students had the double martini? That was for the waiter. Believe me, he needed it. Well, how many people were in your party? Let's see, 15 students, Cookshank and his wife, myself. That's 18. You got charged for 19 dinners. Oh, Harvey Butcher had two. Fingers. How was the food? It was good. Had veal scallopini and mushrooms. Tuna surprise or franks and beans, Mr. Kaufman? No surprises for me today, thank you. Franks and beans, honey. Do me a favor, will you, the next time you decide to have one of your achievement dinners? Yes. Please, take me with you. <laughs> 